On the day of death, when my beer is on the move, do not suppose that I have any pain at leaving this world. Do not weep for me, and say not, alas, alas. You will fall into the devil's snare, and that would indeed be alas. When you see my hearse, say not, parting, parting. That time, there, will be, for me, union and encounter. When you commit me to the grave, say not, farewell, farewell. For the grave is a veil over the reunion of paradise. Having seen the going down, look upon the coming up. How should setting impair the sun and the moon? What seed ever went down into the earth which did not grow? Why do you doubt so regarding the human seed? You think I have been buried, don't you? The seven heavens are under my foot. Ya Hazreti Mawlana The great Muslim Sufi, Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi, was born on September 30th, 1207, in Balkh. His father, Bahauddin Walad, was one of the most knowledgeable men of his time. He was a very famous scholar and man of religion. He was known throughout the Islamic world as the Sultan of the religious scholars or the master scholar. When the Mongol threat was spreading wave upon wave from east to west, leaving behind pillage and terror, and reaching the Balkh borders, the Sultan of Scholars decided to leave. In 1220, with a small caravan comprised of his family and students, he began a long journey that would last eight years. The caravan's first stop was Nishapur. Later, leaving Nishapur, they first went to Baghdad, and then to Mecca by means of the Kufa road. Making Hajj, they continued to Medina, Jerusalem, and Damascus before reaching the borders of Anatolia. The journey was endless. They traveled to Aleppo, Melatia, Erzinjan, Sivas, Kayseri, and Nide before arriving in Karaman. While staying in Karaman, the family was shaken by the loss of Jalaluddin's mother, Mumine Hatun, and his older brother, Allah Eddin. Jalaluddin married Gever Hatun there, and their children, Sultan Balad and Aladdin Jalabi, were born in that city. When they left Karaman in 1228 and arrived in Konya, the great Seljuk capital and one of the most important centers of science and art and thought in the Middle Ages, they left behind a very long journey of eight years. I am the light of dawn, the evening breeze. I am the hum of the forest, the sound of the waves. I am the mast, the helm, the captain and the ship. I am the rock that ruined the boat. I am the hunter, the bird and the trap. I am the picture, the mirror, the sound and the echo. I am silence, thought, language and sound. 
I am the sound of the flute. I am the spirit of man. I am the spark in rocks. I am the gold in mines. I am the rose and the nightingale enraptured by the rose. I am the doctor and the patient, the poison and the cure. I am sweetness and bitterness, honey and oleander. I am the city and the guard, the besieger and the wall. I am the chain of being, the circle of worlds, this stage of evolution. I am the descent, the ascent. Mustafa Mujtaba this long journey by his father's side was a perfect time of training for Mevlana Jalaluddin. In addition to the basic sciences that he was taught by the Sultan of Scholars, Mevlana also received different enriching and valuable thoughts and ideas from many famous scientists and thinkers whom he met throughout the years in various countries. These were to become the foundation of the essential components of Rumi's teaching, tolerance and love for mankind. In this sea there is no death for us. In this sea no grief or sorrow. This sea consists of boundless love. This sea is comprised of goodness and generosity. of useless things and games. In fact, their whirling is loftier than many other acts because works are judged by their intentions. The Rebab is a source of love and a friend to man. Arabs call a cloud Rebab. Just as the cloud waters the rose and the rose garden, the Rebab nourishes the heart. When air is blown on a fire, the flame increases. If you blow on the ground, only the dust will rise. The Rebab is a clear call. It calls man to the Sultan's presence and waits. Lovers on their knots with difficulty. When no obstacles remain in love, it becomes like water, neither sweet nor cool. With the sound of its voice, hearts gather around only one important thing and focus on just one task. The voice of God saves man from disbursement. Don't speak much about love to those who are restricted to the body. Their assignment is only fear, hope, merit, and sin. Narrations handed down verbally confirm that these symbols were seen and witnessed in the whirling ceremony. The Sharia is a set of rules based on the visible world. The truth is circumstantial based on the esoteric. The Sufi order is a path leading from visible to the esoteric. Treading this path is called suluk. For a person who travels from among the people to the truth, the illusion of existence disappears. Such a one has arrived in the realm of annihilation. But this is not the station of perfection. Passing beyond this station requires that one see the people as the manifestation of Allah's attributes and actions, that one witness that God is evident in the mirror of the people, that one know that there is a reality beyond every visible appearance, and that one must treat everything according to what it is worth. This is the station of perfection, 
and this station is called spiritual knowledge. The devotee who travels through the first three stages from the Sharia to the Dervish path to the truth stops at the center of uniqueness and arrives at the station of spiritual knowledge. The four stages of the whirling ceremony symbolize these four stations. While turning around and around and repeating the name of majesty, the devotee contemplates and reflects the meaning of the Quranic verse, no matter where you turn, you will turn towards the face of God. Spreading his arm while turning, Krishna's right hand is like a prayer open to heaven. His left hand hangs down. This means we receive from Allah and give to the people. We appropriate nothing for ourselves. We don't exist. We are nothing but a shape that exists as an apparent means. Similarly, this position means we break the dawn and rain down on the earth. We are mercy to the world. We arrive at the essence from the attributes. We come from the essence to the world of attributes and the world of appearances. We disappeared in the light of Muhammad, a mercy to the worlds. When the arm spreads, the hands appear in the shape of the Arabic letter Lam Elif. The trunk of the body is the Arabic letter Elif drawn in the middle of the Lam Elif. Thus, La becomes Ila. In other words, the declaration of Allah's unity is symbolized. Thus, the ceremony of whirling is symbolical of unity from the beginning to end. Since all creatures will be raised from the dead when the trumpet is blown, they will wake up with pleasure to the melody of the trumpet and jump up. Those who are frozen and don't respond to the music's effect, they are worse than the dead, they are hopeless. The body that drinks this pure wine and the heart that becomes intoxicated with it will burn in the fire of separation, become purified and evolve. Come, you are the soul of the whirling dance. You are the walking cypress of the whirling garden. Come, no one like you has come nor will come. The whirling dance has never seen nor will see anyone like you. Come, even the source of the sun is your shadow. You have thousands of stars in the sky of the whirling dance. The whirling dance is thanking you in hundreds of clear and plain languages. When you begin the whirling dance, you leave the two worlds behind. This realm of whirling is beyond the two worlds. The roof of the seventh heaven is a high roof, but the whirling ladder goes beyond this roof. It is more sublime. Put your foot on whatever is other than it. Put your foot and smash it. The whirling dance is your property and goods, and you are the property and goods of the whirling dance. What can I do if love embraces me? While whirling, I embrace it and press it to my bosom. When the atoms are filled with the rays of the sun, they all join the whirling silently and dance. What is the whirling dance? 
A salute to the mysteries of the heart, strange heart. It becomes vigorous and content when their letters arrive. The mind's branches and shoots are scattered by this wind. With the plucking of the plectrum, the body expands and attains peace. When the sound of the tambourine is heard, the soul takes a handful of arrows and begins throwing them at the body. In the body, a strange and new sweetness appears. Even a sweet taste comes from the flute to the lips of the flute player. Watch and see. Now a thousand scorpion sorrow have died. Thousands of joyful moments turn constantly without wine cups. Words are spoken to those who need words. Why is it necessary to speak to one who understands without speaking? The skies and the earth are words to the person who understands. The main thing is the purpose. If the purpose is examined, no duality remains. Duality is pieces and halves. The foundation is one. An elephant was taken to a water hole to drink. The elephant saw itself in the water and thinking it was another elephant, it became frightened. It didn't know it was frightened of itself. If all the bad traits like cruelty, hatred, envy, ambition, unreasonableness and pride are in you, you're not offended. But if you see these in someone else, you become frightened and hurt. Know that you are frightened of yourself and offended by yourself. A person is not disgusted by his own baldness or sore. He will put his wounded finger on some food and lick his fingers without feeling any disgust in his heart. But if he sees a tiny sore or small cut on someone else, he will be disgusted by the food he eats and find it hard to swallow. Bad traits are like this. If a person has them, he's not much bothered. But if he sees only a small degree of the trait in someone else, he is repulsed. You are frightened of it and escape, but excuse him. If someone else is frightened and offended by you, your being offended is an apology for him. You are the Mecca for souls. Let me circumambulate around you. I am not a raven that I should fly around ruins. I have no other trade, no other preoccupations. It is my trade to revolve like the skies. That's my preoccupation. The whirling dance is the comfort and peace of vital people. Those who control their souls know this. A person sleeping in the middle of a rose garden would like to wake up. But someone sleeping in prison would be at a loss to wake up. Regarding the person who doesn't see his own treasure or the moon, to such a person of what use is the whirling dance? Whirling is for encountering the beloved who steals the heart. There is turning in this world and the other for those whose faces are turned towards the Qibla. Especially for those who enter the dance circle and whirl with the Kaaba in the center.
The moment has come for migration. The time of salmon leaping from the spring has arrived. Everything will meet destruction. Only his truth will remain. The rest of these words will emerge in the heart of the one who is speechless and whose spirit is strong. My speech has finished and so has my life. The giver of good tidings has arrived. At last I am escaping from the body. As the sun sets on December 17, 1273, Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi closed his eyes for the last time in Konya, where he had come 44 years earlier. The coffin carried above the heads of those in the funeral procession was buried in the ground next to the graves of his father, the Sultan of Scholars, and Salah ad-Din Sarkoub. Konya pressed to its bosom the genius who could not be contained by the world. His spiritual being found its place in the hearts of all mankind. After my death, don't look for a grave in the ground. I am buried in the hearts of the wise. As long as I am alive, I am the slave, the servant of the Quran. I am dust on the path of Muhammad Mustafa. Whoever relates my words differently to another, I am absolved of him and those words.